What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be bringing you another tutorial video. So it's going to be a little bit more like the previous one on the displacement map. So I've got a lot of positive feedback from that. And I saw you guys like the tutorial based um, videos. I guess I guess they're all tutorial based, but you know, this one's a little bit different. So it's doing a technique rather than making a poster in the end. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be learning highlights and shadows. So obviously, you know that from the title, but it's a little bit of skin treatment, a little bit of a uh, new techniques just to make your images look that little bit better so i have a lot of people in my discord at the moment asking me you know how do you get the skin to look like that how does it you know look so sharp and, and soft through these techniques you will be able to achieve that effect i'm going to teach you those right now obviously um if you do happen to enjoy the video this video style obviously hit a like if you do dislike it let me know in the comments why you're disliking the video just so i can improve for the future and yeah guys thank you so much for all the support on the videos let's get straight into it So guys, I've got an image of Neymar here. This is just a simple image. Now, this is gonna be what we're gonna be working with today. So realistically, when you get your image in Photoshop, it's gonna be a rasterized layer. Um, and what you're gonna need to do is convert this to a smart object to begin with. So if you right click on it, convert it to a smart object, that's the first step of uh, you know manipulating your image. So now that we've got this as a smart object, it's gonna save everything we do to this image. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna to go to filter, and then we're gonna to go to neural filters, and you'll be loaded with this menu on the right. Now there's a lot of stuff you can do with this. There's, there's loads of different techniques and stuff. You can even move his eyes if you want to, but what we're looking for is this called JPEG artifact removal. Now this is gonna get rid of all the, you know, little, like if I zoom in here, so it's gonna get rid of like all this, all this stuff, like you can see the little squares and stuff and it's just cause the image is like very high quality, but it does get blown out. So pixels start to show because I'm on a big screen, I can see the pixels and this is something we wanna avoid. So basically using this, it's gonna smooth that out. Now you have three settings, high, low, medium. I have mine on high just because it gives you a smooth effect, but realistically you wanna set it to what you feel your image needs. Once this is done, I'm gonna come back. So I'll cut to you when it's done. So guys, welcome back. Now it's about to be done as you'll see the effect applied in three, two, one. There you go. It's applied it. Now, as you can see, this looks a lot softer. Now we've lost a little bit of quality and texture. I do agree. So we'll click okay. And now this is where we start to reapply some texture. So we're gonna just go and convert this to a smart object again to move on to the next phase. So we've got the neural filters in. Now we're gonna go to filter, other, high pass. Then we're gonna go to overlay, set that to overlay. So click this three thing, three lines here, set that to overlay. That's good. Then we're gonna go to sharpen or unsharpen mask. And then 20, two and 50 is what I have mine on. Now, as you can see, we're bringing back some texture, aren't we? So if I turn these two off, yeah, gone. If I turn them back on, yeah, it's bringing it back in. So that's that done. Now we're gonna go into camera or filter. So this is an early stage of camera or filter. This is something I do pretty much on every image, just so you can get a basic little bit of quality in. So just follow these steps. I put the highlights up usually, the shadows down a bit. Clarity, definitely bring that up to about 10. Same with texture, bring it up to about 10. So that texture you've lost in the neural filters, it'll be brought back in for the camera or filter. So you don't need to worry about the neural filters too much, um, losing your quality type thing. Saturation, you can play around with that later on, uh, like a later date. Curve, usually what I do is boost the highlights so it's a brighter image just so it gives you more to work with when you actually drop it into your design because obviously you can change it to make it darker and stuff if you need to but that's what I do usually. Sharpen, I usually put this at about 30 and maybe noise reduction to about 10 on both and that is what I do for the, the start of the image. So you've got that now. Um, basically now what we're going to do is convert this to a smart object again and now we're going to cut it out from the background. So once I've got to this stage is where I cut it out. So usually I'll just select subject and um, yeah, I'll select a mask it and that'll be it. So I'm gonna quickly cut this out now and then I'll be right back with you. Okay guys, so welcome back. I've got my image, it's all cut out and I'm gonna put it on a black background quickly so I can show you the effects that I need to show you. Got our image, got all the texture, image looks great. Obviously his hair looks a bit weird but I've picked a blurred image so your images will look a lot better so don't worry about that. But the next thing we're gonna do is skin treatment. So this is where I treat the image to make it look really good. So I'm gonna show you these steps now. So first one is gonna be dodge and burn. You're gonna create a new layer. You're gonna clip and mask it to the image. And then we're gonna to go to where it says edit. And then we're gonna go down to fill. So fill, select 50% gray, 
100% opacity, don't need to worry about that, click OK. And now this is going to go on top. And then what you're going to do is set this to overlay, like so, and you're ready for your next step. So what you need to do now is find the dodge and burn tool. So these are going to be located on the left here. So dodge, burn, usually I do burn first. Burn is for the shadows, dodge is for the highlights. Now you're going to need to just go find your dark areas and start burning them just to make them darker. Now you can take your time with your, obviously your images like I would if I was making an actual design. But for this part of the video, I'm just going to go over the shadows quickly just so I can really show you what the point of it is. So as you can see already, it's making that look a lot more defined. Even though it's blurred, it still looks a lot more defined and better. That's the whole point of this. So this this is part of sports editing. They edit their images. They make them look more uh, not realistic. I wouldn't say more edited. Should we use a better word? Um, just because it just looks more interesting than a basic image. So using this on all your dark uh, bits, it's going to make it look a lot more intense. And it's going to make people look a bit more because the image will look better. So. I know I've done that quickly right there, so I've just gone over the dark bits again. Obviously, you can go over his beard if you want. Just make sure you go over the dark bits. Those are the main bits that need to be gone over. Let's do that down there. And now, right, if I click here and I go and turn it off, you can see there's a massive difference, right? So all the shadows are coming out more and, you know, the shirt ripples are being shown more. So that's that. So the next bit is going to be highlights. Now, dodge tool is very harsh. Now, I only have mine on about 50%, you know, exposure um, so make it quite big I usually do this around the outside because I don't really go onto the kit too much unless I'm doing actual highlights if I have a glow so what you do is just go around the outside obviously it's got white hair so it's gonna look really bright around the outside and just make it make it look like it's glowing a little bit more just make it look a bit more interesting you can go over the beard if you want to bring it out more but just around the edges you can go in if you want but we'll be doing the inside of the face more after this step so as you can see, if it turns on and off, got a nice little difference. So that's the first step. The next step is where I change the eyes and the teeth color. So what you're going to need to do is get a curves layer, clip and mask it to it again, and then you're just going to boost this up. Once you've boosted it, you're going to invert the mask to make it black. So Command I or Control I on a uh, Windows computer. And then you're going to go select a hard brush, put your opacity up to 100%, and now you're going to go to your eyes. So once you've found your eyes, which shouldn't be too hard, um, you're just going to get your brush and you're just going to paint over the top of the eye, just like that. Very simple, nothing too complicated there. You should all be able to do that. So paint over it uh, like that. Now I can't really do that side, so I'm not going to bother with that. And then we're going to go find the teeth. So we're going to go find the teeth, we're going to go paint over those. Now this will all make sense once you, uh, once you see the next step, but make sure you paint over all the teeth. And make sure you don't go on the uh, the actual gums, otherwise you'll have to paint that back in, and that just takes more time. Let's go over the teeth like this. It doesn't really matter too much with Neymar because he's probably already had his teeth done and whitened. It won't look too much different, but it will look better. So we're going to go like that, and then we're going to zoom out. And now what we're going to do is select a hue and saturation layer like so. So click that, clip and mask that one to it. And now you're going to take this mask that we've made on the curves layer, I'm going to drag and drop it on top of hue saturation. So just drag and drop it. Now I know it's done nothing so far. It's because we need to reduce the saturation on the saturation layer. So reduce it. There you go. Now, if I zoom in, you can see it's got rid of all the, the nice, well, not nice, but different bits in his eyes. And it's done the teeth as well. So now what you need to do is take your brush again and go and paint back in the color in his eyes. Just because, you know, that looks a bit odd if he doesn't have any color in his eyes. So you want that bit to be colored. But this bit looks way better when it's like that, especially after um, after editing. So teeth, yeah, they look a little bit odd, but once you zoom out, it's fine. You can know, you're can you not going to notice that too much, especially when it's all in a poster and developed. So that's how you do the eyes and the teeth. The next step is going to be another curves layer. So we're going to add a curves layer on top of this. And then we're just going to go like that. And then we're going to boost that up and then invert it. And that's what we need to do for the curves layer. So that's inverted. Now we're going to paint some stuff on. So we're going to get a soft brush for this. I'm going to reduce it down to about 30% opacity. And you want it about 30% because you don't want to overdo it. So this is going to be the highlights because we've obviously boosted the curves layer. So now you're going to go find all those highlight bits. And you're just going to go and paint on them. Just go and paint on them nice and slow. Don't overdo it. I've overdone it a few times and it looks not as good in editing. But if you take your time, just go over the bits that are meant to be highlighted like I'm doing right now, um, find those and just go over them. 
maybe once, maybe twice, maybe a couple of times, but just go over them. Make sure you uh, take your time with it and find the right bits. Obviously this bit doesn't need to be done too much because it's already quite light. And you can go around the edge again like we did with the dodge and burn tool if you would like. But you don't need to do that really. Um, kit you can do it as well. But I usually use this just for the face, this technique. Just because it works better. So, as you can see, I've gone around most of the face. Now if I turn this off, there you go. You can see it's just a nice little glow. So now we're going to do the same thing again. So we're going to duplicate this. So Command J or Control J on a key on a Windows to duplicate the layer. Clip and mask it to it. And we're just going to reset this uh, layer mask. So we're just going to uh, Command I or Control I. Nope, sorry. Command back or con uh, Control backspace. And then that's going to be black again. So we've reset it. I'm just going to move this line down here down to black. So it's darker now. So now when we start painting bits in, you'll see it's a nice little dark effect. So now we go over the shadows just like, you know, we did before with the burn tool. But now we're doing it with curves just just to add that extra bit of depth to your image, just to make it look a little bit cooler, to be honest. And it will look cooler. Trust me, especially in your final editing stage, it will look so much better than it would if you didn't do this, um, because that's what I do for all my designs. I add this technique. And it works. So like that, I just want to go over all the dark bits, even the hair if you want, like dark bits in the hair you can go over just to, you know, make it a little bit more defined. And then you don't really need to do the kit because we've already done the kit with the dodge and burn. So you don't need to worry about that. If you want to make this a little bit more gradual, which sometimes works, you can reduce these down to about 80% just so it's not as harsh. And now guys, as you can see, we're pretty much getting there. So usually I would add one more thing, which is going to be a rim light. Um, this will be a hue and saturation layer. So you get a hue and saturation, clip and mask that to the player, uh, and then click. Uh, no, you don't need to click colorize. You just boost this lightness to about 98% or 100 if you want, and then double click on the layer. So once you double click, you'll be open with these layer styles. And what you're going to need to do is go down to where this bar is. So this bar down here, is going to determine whether it, the shadows come through or the highlights come through. So what you need to do is hold Alt or Control and then click on this little arrow here and split it. So now you split it, you can pull it. So while holding Alt or Control, drag it across. And as you can see, it brings back the image. So we still got the white, but it, it's been brought back so we can see it now. So that's perfect. Then we're going to click OK. And then we're going to go and invert this so we can't see it. Same process as the curves layers. And now we're going to paint it around the edge. So we're going to get our soft brush again. 30% opacity is fine. You're going to go in here and we're just going to paint that in. Like so. Real nice. Like that around the edge. And you will see once I uh, show you after this and turn it on and off, you will see the effect this has had because it, trust me, it has a really strong effect. So I turn this on and on. On and on, on and off. There you go. You can see it's got a really nice effect. And once we zoom out, and add, we're going to add a camera filter now just to finish it off, you will be able to see the effect it's had on the image. So you can obviously, well, that's have quite a few layers there. There's quite a few different tips and techniques. So what we're going to do now is make a screenshot. So Command Shift Option E on a Mac. Obviously Control Shift Option E on a Windows. Make your screenshot, convert it to a smart object so you can save your camera filter settings. And let's get straight into it. So we're going to do a similar process to what we did before. We're going to boost the contrast up. We're going to uh, boost the highlights up. Shadows definitely bring them down. Whites, I'm probably going to bring them down a little bit. Blacks probably increase them a little bit. And then texture, definitely want to bring this one up. So I usually have it at about 25 for the post editing. Clarity, it depends what you really want the image to look like really. You can play around with this a little bit. I'm going to have it about 20. Um, and then dehaze probably gonna have that about 13 saturation you can obviously play around with this now because now that we've finished the uh, this would be obviously when I finished the poster but now that we finished the poster we can obviously add the saturation in so usually boost that to about 20 and then vibrance up about 20 as well and once you've boosted it it just makes all these highlights and shadows we've put in look a little bit better instead of so flat and blown out so you want to do that Curves, boost that a little bit. Shadows, obviously bring them in. Don't make it too harsh though, because it just looks a little bit weird. And now sharpening, boost that up to about, yeah, probably about 40 is good. And then noise reduction to about 13. So guys, similar process to what we did at the start. Obviously, I, if I had a whole poster behind him, I would be playing around with all these colors and stuff just to make it look right. But 
that is what I would that's this is what I would do for the images is what I'm trying to show you so obviously I could add some grain if I wanted to um, but yeah as an image this is how I edit my images and then I put them into a photo so now as you can see it just looks so much better than it did before and it looks cooler for a sports poster so basically that is all the techniques you've got there so hopefully you have enjoyed the video if you have leave a like obviously smash that like button it tells the YouTube gods that this is a good video um, thank you for all the support on the recent videos they've been amazing I know you've been smashing the views and everything I'm glad everyone is enjoying it and thank you to all the new subscribers as well we've recently hit 3000 I really appreciate that too um, one more thing if you haven't joined the discord check the discord out this is going to be the main place you'll find me and be able to talk to me and stuff. So this is new designs page. So you'll have all these designs to look at. Obviously, there's one of mine there. Um, and we all just sit in here and give people feedback. Obviously, if you're interested in something like that, there'll be a link in the description for you to join. Um, and yeah, we've got loads of things going on. We've got design of the week challenge. You know, this week it's going to be Arsenal. And uh, last week it was uh, Messi. Denzi won. Congrats to him for this design. Brilliant. Um, so yeah, get in there obviously join you know everyone's welcome we've got about i don't even know how many people we've got in here at the moment probably nearly 300 now so thank you to all those people who have joined but yeah i'm going to minimize that now and get back to the video thank you so much for watching guys smash the like button subscribe look out for new videos and i'll see you next time